it's not about um, it's not about cooking, but cooking in salad master way. And this is because you have your salad master at home, and you are good cooks in your own right. But seeing a recipe done in the salad master way, you might you will find that this is actually more easy than you think it is. So people who doesn't like to cook will start cooking in salad master. So uh, we're going to show you uh, four recipes actually, because um, the third one is in there and the third one is just mashed potato. And um, that's because we're gonna serve that mashed potato with our lamb, okay? So um, let's get rolling, then let's get the, let's start the whole thing. Now the first recipe that I'm going to use to, to make today is lamb shanks, okay? Now today's uh, recipe is all winter recipe, winter warmers, and you know, it's starting to get cold. It's nice to have some nice warm food. And so I thought, let's start with lamb shanks. Okay, so lamb shanks, uh, for the utensils, I'm going to use the electric skillet. However, if you have a bigger size cookware, or like, oh, as, as you can see, we have quite big sizes up there. And if you are serving for, say, a family of 10, <laughs> like what we have, you will be needing, I won't be using this, but I'll be using a much um, bigger, but a shallower pan. I wish it's, I'm not sure you can see, but it's called a nine part bracer. So it's big, but it's this deep. Perfect, it can fit eight of the lamb, the lamb shanks that I'm gonna cook today. All right, so first of all, ingredients is, lamb shanks which i bought from coles <laughs> i like this because it's already lean and i don't have to do anything just literally uh, wash um, meaning just season it and for the stock we need um, one liter of chicken stock i think i hope it's there please just take notes if um, i miss something out you will need also tomato paste i think the, the it's in the recipe then um, apart from that, we'll need some onions. And I have onions here, which we have already pre-cut and uh, I mean cut in half. We will be using a couple of um, a couple of ingredients like bay leaf, rosemary. It can be fresh if you want, but bay leaf, rosemary. Um, we want thyme as well. So if thyme is not there, please add it. Um, cumin seeds, if it's not there, please add it in because this is really nice. Uh, some cumin seeds and of course, salt and pepper. For the vegetables, we'll be adding um, some carrots and then we also need some celery stalks. So I hope it's all there. Do you need, if you need a pen, <laughs> just ask you. So this is all we are going to use today. Um, now, First thing is, I have preheated my electric skillet at 230 degrees centigrade. This is just to preheat, okay? Just to preheat. Because the first step that we are going to do is to sear the meat, okay? So that's preheated at 230 degrees. I have not seasoned this, so I'm just gonna season it with pepper, salt and pepper, okay? And this is the easiest, simplest recipe to make, okay? and some salt okay well i didn't have the anyway salt is salt <laughs> okay so with salt and pepper okay not too much because this is already flavors flavorful then we're going to add just a little bit of oil just a small amount of oil so that we we just want to sear it nicely it's optional but you can add so just check how much oil i'm gonna put Literally, it's just that. <laughs> Small, uh, just a bit of oil. Then, oops, sorry. Uh, okay. So I, I like, I have this habit of um, uh, always spread the oil <laughs> in your pan. Okay, and then. You just put this in. Okay. So this is the first step. You sear the lamb. Okay. And then put the lid back on. Okay. So we're gonna sear this each side for about 
uh, like three minutes on each side, okay? But it's up to you, you can just time it. I'm just putting the cover on to, to contain the heat. That's mainly the reason for searing. If it's not properly written there, just make that adjustment, okay? All right, now my assistant is G. Hi, G, come please. <laughs> so G is going to show us, oh, Maurice, just come, we've got some recipes there. Um, so, G is going to help us or to show, uh, will help you to uh, cut some vegetables and she's going to explain um, what cone we're going to use. So, for we need some onions. So, while this is doing, while that's happening, we're going to chop some onions. So, uh, I will need one whole onion using cone number three. Okay. Okay, G. So that's very easy. So when you're cutting onions, please make sure first rule is to cut it in half if you want to chop onions, okay? So the salad master machine, as you can see, if you have one of these, please use it. Keep it on your bench top because if not, and if it's just under the table, then you're not gonna use it, okay? So we'll be using that, thanks for that, G. And then we'll also be cutting some of the carrots. So the carrots will be sliced, okay? For number four, so we'll just get another container for that. Okay. So, so we need to slice, just use this. Thank you. But then, so we'll need this, okay? So we need two carrots sliced. It's up to you if you want it cubed, but I like it sliced. <laughs> okay. That is call number four. Call number four. Okay. Then for our um, for this one, we need to use a knife to chop it, <laughs> okay? So, so the good old knife is still very useful for chopping if you want to chop something um, thick. And we'll just chop the okay the celery into small cubes. So here's the knife. Okay. Yeah. While I okay. Wow. That's how it should be here. Okay. okay. So that's about three minutes on each side. So the, the reason why we are doing this part is because we don't want all the juice of the lamb to come out. So we are sealing it. So we're by searing it, we're sealing the, the juice of the meat. And that's why when you are uh, making you know steaks, you gotta you have to it has to be on high heat. Okay. So with salad master, it's the same thing. We always start on 230 degrees if you want to make steak. Um, pan fry one side. You don't go tick, tick, tick. You just do one side, leave it for four minutes, for example, and then the other side, three minutes, if you want it medium rare, so it depends. But um, again, to sear is to seal the, the juice of the meat in, in there, okay? All right, so now, thank you, G. So what we're gonna do is, while that's actually cooking, we are going to start preparing our mashed potato, okay? Because it will take some time to chop to, to slice our potatoes, okay? So for the mashed potato, okay, so for the mashed potato, we just need potatoes. <laughs> okay. So, which means we are going to, okay, I'll just grab this. So that is ready, okay. So for the mashed potato, you just really need potatoes and then you need to just use either cone number two, 
okay? Or if you want call number four, but I won't suggest cutting the potato in quarters and then boiling it with lots of water. So we're gonna show you the, or we can just put it straight in there, in the six quart. Is that what we're gonna use for the potato? This one? Yeah. Our soup. Well, that's for the soup, okay, I'll just it. So all of you have, you all have a three quart grocer and a basket, so use that for your mask for your potato. So pull number two. So, so there you go. So the salad master machine, as I said, is a very useful product. You just have to use it. And if you don't have one, please organize a cooking show. You can get it for free, okay? It's only a uh, two couple family, and then that's yours. Okay? So as you can see here, um, by the way, I just, um, in case most people don't know, anyone who books or organizes a demo or a cooking show in the month of April, are actually, you are going to receive a complimentary gift from us. And that complimentary gift, which I haven't explained yet, is the Salad Master tong. So you have a choice between the tong and a turner. So these are one of the two gifts that you have an option. Just book a show in, 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 in April, and then you can actually get this. Why? Because April is our anniversary month. <laughs> so on top of your normal gift, this or this will be yours. Okay. Okay, let's check. Wow, so that's actually nice to see it. I want the other side too. Okay, maybe this. Let's focus on the meat side. And that should be, that shouldn't take long to sear, okay? At 230 degrees. I'll get to the juice. This is very juicy. <laughs> okay. Now after that will be the last side, we're going to take that out and then we're going to start sauteing our um, vegetables. Okay? So okay. Now when it comes to um, cooking these lamb shanks, if I'm gonna add this whole liter of, uh, of stock, that will that could overflow. So I'm not gonna put the whole one, um, one liter in. I'll put half or three quarters, and then we'll just put the rest when the stock is already almost gone. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. We just have to set this aside, okay? Just have to set this aside now. So the potato before you before you cook it, make sure that you wash it, because washing the potato is de-starching it, okay? Always keep that in mind. Most people don't wash. Um, well, because normally you would boil the potato in lots of water, isn't it? But in this way, we'll just wash it first before we actually cook the potato. All right, so set aside. I love this. My family started enjoying this lamb shanks. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna put now so basically, this, this little bit of oil is infused now with, with the flavor of the lamb, okay? So we're just going to put this. Okay. Whenever I do stir fry, I know they say you have to keep stir frying, but I prefer just making sure that the... I don't really stir fry a lot, I just let it cook by letting it flat and leaving it for a good few, just maybe a minute or so. It will make my cooking faster. Just leaving it like that. It's cooking as it is, okay? Then we're going to, I'm going to chop some, um, some garlic. So, is garlic in our recipe, yes or no? 
Okay. So I will be using cone number two for the garlic. I got cone number one, sorry. And just okay. So cone number one will give you a very, very fine um cut, which is what I want for my okay. That's it. Okay, cone number one is so good for garlic and anything that you want to put in your um stir fry. So okay. all right, so I do then I'm gonna just add all the rest of the celery. And carrot. You think that's a lot of carrots? It's actually nice when you add this, to cook, uh, eat this with your lamb okay. okay, then we'll then add all the rest of the ingredients, which is the stock. So this time I'm only going to add a half of the stock. So that would be uh, two cups. Because this is one liter, that's four cups. So let's grab my measuring cup here. Okay, so two cups. Oh, you're going to love this, it's really, really nice. You know what? I'll make it three quarters. <laughs> Three cups in there. There you go. So, because the other, the remaining, the remaining stock will be added towards later, like half an hour before we turn off the, before this whole thing finishes. So let's add a teaspoon of rosemary. Oh, where's my teaspoon? It was here before. Oh, there you go. So a teaspoon. So herbs, it's up to you. How much herbs you want? You know. This is where you just dump everything. Oh, sorry. If you have any questions, um, whoever has a question, please feel free to ask. So this is a teaspoon as well. And then thyme, so a teaspoon. Just all the flavors will just combine and then add up to the you know, a beautiful taste. Then, salt, you need salt, and pepper, okay? According to taste, and salt, according to taste also. It's again up to you, okay? Now, tomato, tomato paste. Got it. So I would put um, one and a half or two tablespoons of, of uh, tomato paste. Okay, for this one, so just one, I'd put two. So there's no more half, okay? Mix it. Okay. Then bay leaf. Is bay leaf in your recipe? Okay, so bay leaf as well. So now, okay. Now with bay leaf, um, don't put too much because then sometimes when it's too much, it becomes uh, peppery, okay, which we don't we don't want. So two is enough. Okay. Then we'll add the lamb. Okay. Am I missing something in the instructions? I think it's all. Ah. Yeah, I added the cumin seeds already. Okay. So why are the vegetables in there? Because the the purpose of that, especially with the celery, it gives flavor in your stock, and that's why celery is good for all types of soups that you that we that we make. And so. That's it, put the lid on, and then we are going to cook this. Normally, this would take, if you're gonna use a normal 
pot or whatever you use normally takes about three hours to cook this but we are only going to cook this when the valve clicks okay then you reduce the, the temperature down to 130 okay then we are going to time it from 130 let's time it for one and a half hours okay don't worry, you're not going to eat this after one and a half hours. I already have some already done. <laughs> so it's already done. So literally, this is how you would prepare it at home. Okay, so which means I have something for dinner already for my family. Okay, so now 230 degrees, keep it like that. When the valve clicks, reduce the heat to 130 and then time it for one and a half hours. What I would do? Oh, yes. uh, just a quick question. Do you think you could put a fourth one in? Yes, That's I can nice. put a yes, I can put uh, a fourth okay. one oh. in. Yes, I can put a fourth one. That's what I did for the with the first batch. Now the best thing about this is um, you can tell if this if the stock is too much. So may, what we'll do around um, halfway of the time, um, I want the other side of the meat to be you know to be submerged in the stock. So we will turn it on the other side half the time okay and by then we will also know if the stock is too much or too little which means we can add more of the stock okay all right so i'm gonna just organize my that's pretty quick and uh, i'll just organize this for the second recipe so um, see now it's clicking um it will click fast because it was set at 230 degrees so what we'll do is just reduce the heat now to 130. I'll just put this away. If um, you're not missing a zero. Ah, good question. Good question. So I'll I'll get back to you on that. Hang on. I'll just reduce the the temperature now to 130 degrees. Okay. That will click for a while, okay? And then I'll just start the timing to uh, set it to one hour and a half. Okay. Right. Now, you. this is more like according to how you like it. If you want it really off the bone, well, this is only three. I think one and a half is enough, but you can set it to more than that, like two hours if you want. But I find that this is always half, half the time than the normal you know, time requirements. So let me just set this on the side so we can prepare this. By the way, uh, me, uh, Gina has already cooked the potatoes. So what she did is she just, we have, we, we I think we processed a lot of potatoes. So that means the, the three quart is too small for the potatoes. So the whole idea was to put the potato in a basket, if you have the basket, and then uh, put that, but we have so much potatoes. So this time without the basket, put it in a normal cookware, size cookware, so she use, she's using this one, okay? Whatever you have at home, you can use, but this is like a six quart, I'm sorry, this is a 4.5 quart roaster. With a little bit of water, I don't, I, I'm gonna open this. How much water did you put in the potato? One third cup. <laughs> one third cup, okay? One third of a cup is the water requirement for these potatoes. So you can imagine, it's not swimming in, in water, okay? So when this, uh, for the mashed potato, when the valve clicks, we're gonna reduce the heat to low, okay? And then after that, we'll just time it for, maybe give it a good, just a lot, 15 to 20 minutes. Okay, so can we have a timer? Can can one, some one of you become our be our timer? When this clicks, uh, we'll reduce the heat. I think for now that's still okay. okay. So put the lamp shank on the side because that will take some time. Okay, great. So if you have any questions, especially the people in the chat, please just type in your question. Ah, Mar Mar Margaret has a question. If you don't have an electric skillet, you can actually use any of, you can use your seven quart roaster, like the big one. Um, you can use something like this, if you have a, a big size. So you, you've got the big one, the seven quart. Then I will process the same thing, uh, medium high when you're, 
searing the lamb. And then after that, the same process, just put everything, but then medium click low. When it's on click, low it, and then set the time again to, you know, one and a half hours. So, the same. It's just medium high. Huh? But you can put it in the oven too. With that. You can, but then in the oven, well, you can use this directly on the stove, isn't it? You can cook it directly on the stove. No, I won't, I won't go and put this in the oven if I don't have an electric skillet. Use this as your oven. <laughs> this is your oven in itself, okay? <laughs> because it's sealed. Uh, wait, this is still on medium. Let's just wait for, um, with the potato, when the, with the valve, always, my rule of thumb is, when the valve is too noisy, like that, that, that's, the, that's the way it taps, then that's the time you reduce the heat to low. If it's still starting to build up, the heat is still building up, so don't touch it yet. But if it's like a non-stop, that's when you reduce the heat to low. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. I know. Um, don't rush. <laughs> okay. All right. So um, I think uh, we we don't have a recipe. I'll just eat with Maurice. Maurice, you don't have a recipe? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So uh, I think we're on for to the next recipe. And the next recipe is our chowder, okay? A seafood chowder. <laughs> so for the seafood chowder, um, the reason why I came up with the chowder as my recipe is because, okay, this is now making noise. So for, for people in, in the, in Zoom, um, so the valve is already clicking. So we are go. I'm now going to reduce the temperature, or oh, it's reduce it further. This is at 130, and it's still see making that flapping. So I'll continue to lower the heat now. Let me try and reduce that to 115. So this is now slow cooking. Okay, see how we go after that. <laughs> So there you go. I think 115. I want it uh, closed, but if it doesn't close, but still it doesn't make too much of that noise, okay? So if you notice there's water, there's water coming out on the side, that's because the stock that we put is more. So if there's more stock, then can you imagine it will overflow? So rule of thumb for, uh, for when you're cooking, whether it's on the stove or whether that, um, as much as possible, the, the liquid or the whatever you're cooking is three quarters, three quarters high, no more than that, for, a, for an efficient cooking. Okay, hope that helps. But yeah. So here, I think the stuff that we put, which is three, um, three cups, is still a lot. Three cups? Yeah, I put three cups. So maybe now you can reduce it to maybe just half. You know? Yeah, two cups, sorry. All right, so next recipe is um, the seafood chowder. <laughs> now, um, one of the things that uh, our children starting to enjoy at this time is the soups, you know, soup. So, you know, pumpkin soup is starting to come out again. <laughs> seafood chowder, I thought I just had, have to make something simple, but yet hard, like hearty. One thing I forgot to, to do is to, to serve it, this with bread, because it's nice to serve this with crusty bread. Um, yeah, and then they also wanted, you know, like soups are starting, oh, mom, can you make this? Like chicken and corn soup, the simplest and easiest. <laughs> so let's do this. Uh, and um, soup is always nice, even though you have extra, it's nicer when you eat it the next day. <laughs> so six quart roaster, you have a seven quart. So uh, if you want something bigger, of course you have a 10 quart. So really whatever that suits your family. Okay, so I'm going to be using our induction. So we'll use our induction stove top today. Okay. All right. OK. 
Okay, so for the seafood chowder, the, the instruction is really simple. We need butter. <laughs> okay, and it says 750 grams of butter. So one fourth of this, okay? And then we also need <coughs> onions, right? So we need, uh, I, I believe we need garlic, we need onions as well. So let's do the chowder. So again, preheat, thank you. Let's preheat the, what do you call it? So always start with medium heat. That's this is an induction stove top. So we'll be using as I said it to number four. I number five. Okay. Then let's cut some. Okay. okay, guys, guide me on this. Preheat roaster on medium heat, which we already is doing. We need onions again and garlic. So the onions is here. We're gonna chop it again using cone number three. Thank you, G. So that's the garlic. Okay, this is true. Cone number three. So can you see this word? Can, is this clear? Okay, let's see. So again, that's your cone number three. So when it comes to making soups, it's nice to add lots of onions because onions is just, the flavor is just really nice. Okay, and then garlic. I'll just put whatever. So if you, uh, one of the things that we're going to do in the next time is to do food prep, like literally just all food preparation using a salad master machine. So you can put that inside. Slowly, Ooh, onions just hit you. Okay. Because there's a gap between the cone and this, so I'm gonna be doing it really gently. Okay, that's it. So you will expect some leftover. I mean, something that gets stuck there, but I'll just leave it. Okay. How do you know it's ready? Water test. Okay, that's ready. Just wipe the face. <laughs> okay. What cone do you use for onion and garlic? Cone three for the onions and cone one for the garlic because I want the garlic to be fine, finely cut. Okay. So here, I think that's ready. Let's now put some. Okay. That's a lot of butter. Seven fifty. I think I'll reduce it to. Uh, smaller than 750. Okay. Whoa, that's really, 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 really strong. Okay. That's very strong. Okay. Induction cooks up or heats up so fast that it can easily burn your butter. So with the potatoes and carrots, we are going to chop it using cone number three, okay? But there are certain techniques on how you can actually cut it. So it looks like a cube, okay? So if you want potatoes that's quite a little bit, um, you know, smaller cut, I would, I would um, slit. Is that how you put a bit of... Then, that's just my way of uh, making it. It's just like when you're using a knife, do the same thing. Uh, 
Oh, my okay. goodness. Okay, sorry. That's good thing, isn't it? Yeah, please. You can just do it. That will be good. Okay. All right, let's chop the potatoes using cone number three now because we're going to add the potatoes in here. Okay, so potatoes, cone number three. So it would look like that, okay? Because you want, you don't want the potato to be too big. For the chowder, is, you, sometimes, you also don't want it to be too chunky, okay? So it becomes nice and small. Carrots. We'll need one carrot. Just one. Just one carrot. Thank you, G. Okay, so the same thing with the carrots. I'm going to um, slice it so I get a smaller cut. This is good, especially if you're preparing a big batch for your guests okay phone number three yeah okay so there you go so oh unfortunately i didn't i wasn't able to wash the potato here but you know the rule to wash the potato <laughs> then i'm just gonna put everything together okay mm -hmm. Oh yeah, the flour. I forgot the flour. Sorry, we'll just put it on this Yeah. Okay. So what we'll do? That's why I said add the flour. Sorry guys. We'll follow the instructions so you don't get confused. So I'm gonna add the flour. Just cook it on the side. How much flour do we need? Two tablespoons. The purpose of the flour is just to make your soup more like, um, uh, it's not too runny, too fruit, make it slurry, okay? Okay, just adding there. So mix it gently. By the way, the heat setting for this is not on medium high. If you notice, I'm actually, this is now on, phone, on number three. So just medium low, because you don't want to burn the flour, you don't want to brown the flour, okay? Add potatoes, carrots, and of course, we want some celery. So I'm gonna chop the celery using my knife because celery is nice, it's, um, you want it cubes, you know, in cubes. I cannot cut it there because it's gonna be too, too small, too thin. Should be enough. Okay. Let's put it in as well. Then you see some this. I haven't done anything yet. Just added the flour. Okay. And then we will season and then put the stock. So, what is, what stuff are we going to put in this one? This is the whole one liter. So it says here, you put three cups of stock, but then I'll just put, you know, just, you won't go wrong if there's more liquid, okay? Then add flour, continue to cook, add potato, carrots. The stock, I just use um, the chicken stock, but um, because we're going to add seafood, so this is going to be, seafood flavor and for the seafood i actually just use marinara mix just buy the mari marinara mix one but i won't be adding the uh calamari i won't be adding the calamari in. i think for this one i'm gonna add more i need more stock here so maybe one or two more we we'll need this for the onion Oh, that's okay we can make more oh, we have so now i'm adding 
four. And then what do you need? Salt, pepper, bay leaf. So just the flavoring that you want for your... Put some salt. I'd say a teaspoon, around a teaspoon would do. According to your taste, right? Uh, pepper, bay leaf. I'll just put one. <laughs> And then we're gonna add now the marinara mix. Okay. So it's really easy. It's um um it's one of those things that I like because it's so simple and I don't have to think too much what goes first because literally we're just putting everything in. So I'm just gonna excuse. I'm gonna use my well, not my hand. Oh, I'm gonna use that for my <laughs> No, I just remove the uh... Okay. Right. So with this one guys, this is obviously cold, there's nothing more in there. No more calamari leaves. <laughs> but if you want to make your own um, fish stock, then just you know, just uh, steam your own one whole fish if you want, and then flake the fish, and then use that for your for the chowder. That's what I. Uh -huh. I got it from Aldi. <laughs> I think that should be enough. So it really depends what how much you want, but then that will add a lot of flavor in our okay, in our chowder. Okay, so okay, so we are going to put the lid back on. Okay. And when the bulb so this time that was on low, the medium low, because this is on number three. I'm gonna bump the temperature up to six. Increase the temperature every time you open the lid of your cookware, please remember the temperature drops and then so the moment you put the lid back on, set the temperature back to medium, okay? Always like that. If you open it, medium heat, always when you start cooking. <laughs> so we're going to be adding the milk later because we're still cooking. I, find, I feel like milk is some... Um, it's optional only if you want it, you know, only if you want that creaminess. Uh, oh, and lemon zest. So lemon zest, do we need lemon zest? Okay, yes. let me just check. Ah, yes, yes. So we need lemon zest to remove that, uh, just, you know, the fishy, fishy flavor. <laughs> I hope you're learning something today. <laughs> so a bit of lemon zest to our... Uh, to our um, there you go. So you don't have to finish the whole lemon. Okay, so co number one. So zesting will be co number one. Uh, minced garlic will be co number one. Okay. That should be fine. Yep, so we'll just add all of this in our chicken, in our fish. Let's not waste. It's not, <laughs> we're not allowed to waste anything. That's it. So that is our simple <coughs> recipe. Again, that's on number six. When it clicks, we reduce the heat to low. Then we will cook this for how long? Um, uh, 15 minutes, okay? But what I like with the with the chowder is when it has that creaminess, but the creaminess will not come from the cream. It will come from the vegetables that I put in, and I, just, I want to mash certain, you know, a small amount of the potato, 
or the vegetables. So I want it mashed and then put it back there so it's not creamy. Okay? But you can add um, cream if you want, you can add milk if you want. You know, it's really a personal choice. Yes, Peter. Uh, I'm going to serve it, but I thought the remaining stock for the uh, vegetables and vegetables. Yeah, yeah, we will add. Then, then but add. add yeah, I still have some oh, okay. stuff here, so we'll be adding. We'll see. Let's check first how much, uh, how much the if the stock has reduced quite significantly. But let's see. What's the time in this? Okay, that's still one hour and six minutes. So I set this for one and a half hours. Okay. All right. So, um, well, the next one is the dessert. <laughs> so let me just clear this up. And um, yeah, and then we'll see what we'll do in the next one. Sorry, we just uh, basically it's just the the, um, the dry anything here. So we'll just remove whatever. Yeah, time can be substituted. So we put if you put time on this, you can put that as optional, but it's just for spices or anything else that you want to add as flavor. No. no. Yes. So was that easy? Was the chowder easy? Pretty easy, no? You just chop, chop, chop. But yeah, use the machine. <laughs> you have the Salad Master machine, T30. You have it, no? Um, uh, you have the Salad Master machine? Yes. So just use the Salad Master machine. It's really, really, really good. Okay, what about our um, people in our thing? Um, please, would you mind asking our... Um, oh, Oh, so uh, Salaja and I can't see who the other one is. Uh, boots. Uh, and Boots. Do you have any questions? Do you have any questions? And then, then too. Okay, please ask any questions you have. Just type it in the chat and I'm happy to help you on that. <laughs> okay, so let's do the dessert. Okay. This is the simplest I dessert. Silage is all good. Huh? Silage is all good. Yes. <laughs> Great. Silage is from the one in Canberra, isn't it? Silage? Yes? Just say yes. <laughs> you're the, I know it. Unless she's the one from Melbourne. Yes. From Canberra? Yes. I'll be going to Canberra soon. So watch out, we're going to be doing a cooking class in Canberra. We need to grab everyone and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll do an amazing cooking class in Canberra. Watch out, guys. <laughs> we'll, I'll bring the team and we'll do it all together. <laughs> okay, dessert time. So let us make the pear and coconut crumble. So I'm not sure where the coconut came from, but that's actually just sugar. <laughs> So ingredients. Ingredients are we are going to use okay. pears, of course. Okay, and we have a couple of ingredients that we need here. Let's check what is in there. Almond meal. I got this from Coles. It's called almond meal. We definitely need flour. One third cup of sugar. So I use I'm using brown sugar, and this is almond slivers. This will be for the crumble. Okay. We need some cinnamon. Okay. We need uh, of course butter and flour. So we'll be using some flour too. Whatever flour you have at home. Okay. Right. We need butter. Yes, we do. Okay. So. 
first thing, what are we going to use to cook to bake this? So we're going to be using this one. Oh, okay. Fifteen minutes. Our fifteen minutes gone. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Before I do this, can we just check the put the mashed potato? I just want to make sure that it is all done. So that's their mashed potato. Um. Okay, let's check if this is ready to be mashed. Ooh, gee, one third cup was just right. You see, forward. So the potato is actually cooked pretty well. Okay, okay. Or maybe we need a little. Uh, I think we cook it too much because we browned the pan. See. There. Okay, but nevertheless, we can always, the way to prepare this is how we're going to just mash it. We have a masher. Ah, so she will transfer in the bowl, right. So I have this metal thing that you can use for, I don't know where I got this. So we'll just transfer it there. So, okay, I'll get G to organize that for me. Transfer out. I'll mash it there. Yeah, maybe we'll just use this. Or just use this. Yeah, let's, let's wash it. Wash it. <laughs> <laughs> so mash it. Then, then you just add. I love adding garlic salt, garlic powder on this. It's just different. It's nice. <laughs> garlic powder so for the mashed potato um, salt pepper milk garlic powder and shredded cheese <laughs> okay so garlic powder not even moving that's tough anyway just add some salt and pepper Too much, but I think we put some pepper to it. Some pepper. Oh, it's there. Right there. <laughs> okay, salt, pepper, cheese. And, well, actually, in this consistency, you don't even have to add milk. But some people, they want some milk. So, uh, and then cheese, of course. So, we're just gonna. Put it prostrate underneath and let's put some cheese. I will be using again cone number one for the mashed potato. <laughs> Later on, we'll show you how to clean this, this brown bits of our mashed potato. Okay? So, cone one. Okay. So that's now our. That's it. So, uh, uh, cheese, it's up to you how much cheese you want, but then I think this is more than enough. Okay. Okay, so just mix it all together and we'll show you the final um, the final outcome. A bit of garlic powder is I'll set this to 
that's one that's too low so i'm gonna set it back to two hopefully it won't make noise anymore yeah i think that should be fine so now this is on simmer okay we're just letting it simmer for a little bit and yeah and that's that's done okay so we're gonna time this for a good um 15 minutes okay the only reason why or maybe i'll let's reduce it to 10 minutes we want the the meat and the, the seafood to be well cooked and at the same time we also want the potatoes and the carrots to be we don't want it like half cooked it's, it's cooked nicely so at 10 minutes let's see how it works um, 10 minutes yes thank you thank you all right so i hope you're enjoying that we're gonna be enjoying a nice lunch today for sure <laughs> okay so mashed potato good oh yes yeah we're gonna show you the outcome of mashed potato. no i'm reducing it to 10 instead of 15 minutes becomes 10. so let's just set it to 10 minutes for now and then the purpose of that is to see what the consistency of the uh, of the vegetables because i want to mash some of the some of the veggies you know to make it creamy but we can add um, milk if we want okay all right now let, milk for me is optional because some people cannot tolerate milk you know so let's leave it like that okay ready for the next one so we're gonna make the uh, pear crumble i'm using the you have some of you have this the fry pan it's your 10 inch fry pan if you don't have the 10 inch fry pan or skillet you can always use any any flat thing it can be your nine nine inch where i bake the cake <laughs> or it can be the 11 inch where you make the steam veggies so really it's up to you now for the for the pear you have a choice to make uh, um, it says their wedge but I want to use the salad master cut, uh, salad master machine. So I'm going to just make it uh, like sliced, okay? Okay. So let's put it there directly. Okay. So how do we do it? We slice the pears first, right? So it can be like that. If you make it. For presentation wise, if you make wanted wedges, it's also up to you. <laughs> but maybe it's nice when it's uh, it's um, uh, in a wedge because then you know presentation. So let's do it. Let's do wedge. <laughs> <laughs> Five will be too flat. So, wedge will look like will look something like this. Isn't it? That's how it will look. Wedge. Whoops. You know what? However, you want it. <laughs> I just find that you want something like this. Like that. It's better. Or you can just simply just cut it in uh, cubes if you want to, whatever you feel like. Okay. If you prepare this ahead of time, it's important to spring us to put some uh, um, lemon juice to sprinkle uh, lemon juice on the pear so to avoid this from getting burned. You can see that. That's that's your wedge. Okay. Very good. So let's just put uh, almost there. You don't want the, the seeds. Who likes baking here? Anybody? Anyone likes baking? Oh, you, you Peter likes baking. That's good. <laughs> baking is not my type of my cup of tea. I prefer to to give you a nice hearty meal, not dessert. Okay. 
Okay. Anyway, we're almost there. So I think this should be enough. Five is enough. Okay. Because the the best part of this is the crumble. The crumble is so good. All right. That's it. So what do we do next from the recipe? We need to put melted butter, um, not yet. Sugar. Not the lemon, because we have just cut the, just freshly cut the, yeah. Okay, so for you, we're gonna add sugar, lemon juice, and, okay, so this is one third cup. Oh, I'm using brown sugar, by the way, because you know, it, is it one third cup of brown sugar? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a one Just one tablespoon, okay. Yeah, maybe the brown sugar does. Okay, one tablespoon, okay. Because the purpose of this is to cook it first, just like when you make apple pie. Cook it and then you add, um, what else do we need? Where's my guide? Uh, ju juice from remaining half of the lemon. Lemon? Two tablespoons. Okay, great. So, okay, so we'll just put it all together. Can I have some water, G? Water. Okay, so that's a half of a lemon. Two tablespoons of water. And then we're just gonna cook this on the stove. Thank you. And two tablespoons of water. Okay, so that will then, we're gonna cook this on the stove. So, original recipe is to put this in the oven, but we just put it on the stove. Medium quick low, okay? Because the purpose is to make this soft and cook this nicely, okay? So I'm gonna grab my stove. dates you can actually add dates to this one as well okay so that goes medium when the valve clicks um, clicks will reduce the heat to low and then we will cook this say what how long did it say there okay. ah no no we're gonna start the cooking uh -huh. 20 minutes okay well stone top 10 minutes so we're gonna reduce that time okay Now always remember if you're using a stove top, the stove is a, because it's direct heat, so the time is always half. Okay, the time is going to be. Okay, so then we are going to combine, so we're gonna make the crumble, okay? Put this on the side. Put this on the side, and then we're going to make the crumble itself. So let's have a look. How do we make the crumble? I just need a bowl. Okay. Wow, oh, so much recipe. I hope you will get to try this, okay? When you get home, plan your menu for tomorrow. <laughs> Come give this a try because you know you never know how good this is unless you unless you actually try it. Okay? Alright, so guys, um, for our crumble. I need my guide. Okay, you will be my sous chef. What do we need to put in? <laughs> butter. It's melted butter, right? So this butter is, um, we can have it melted um, on heat, but this is melted on room temperature. So then how much butter do we need? Three, five, 75 grams. So that's the one that I need for this. Okay, about that much. Okay. Yep. Then, what else is there? We need flour. So how much flour do we need? One third cup of flour. 
So here we have okay. one third cup. Just put it all in, combine everything. Anything else? Ten minutes. This is ten minutes. Um, okay. I'll turn this off. Okay. We'll turn it off and then see what happens. Let me just finish this up. Yes? Almond meal. Almond meal. Ooh, how much almond meal do we put? One cup. One cup of almond meal. So you can get the almond meal from holes or woods. <laughs> one cup, or oh, anyway, this is three of these. This is a one third cup. Two, and three. That's one cup. Yeah. And. Sorry? I want slivers. Yeah, we'll add that too. Yes, one. This is how much? One cup. Half, half cup. Okay, half cup. Okay, so wow. I like this when you do not, you don't really cook much. And then what's the next one? Sugar. Sugar. That would be. Oh, all of this. Oh, and. Mm -hmm. Okay, and what else? Uh, a teaspoon of ground cinnamon. Ground cinnamon, a teaspoon. Nice. Where was my teaspoon? It was here before. I will just use this one. Okay, I'll just add this one. A teaspoon of ground cinnamon. That should be enough. Okay, anything else? It. and we just have to uh, combine this or mix this all well so if you have so when they say it should be melted butter but this is only melted at room temperature so by the time we put it there we're gonna add this on the apple crumble so it's going to the it will melt so just combine this so it's pretty easy um, I would like you to make your own creations uh, and you know in your home okay. so make uh, some some recipes and then please share it to the group because there's always something new that we would like to know how you make things what is it that you do so that you know, so maybe a cake recipe. <laughs> okay. Okay, wow. So this one. Hmm, I like the smell. Okay. So this is easy. So no need to do any baking. If you're gonna put this in the oven, once you put it all together, you really need to you really need to um, brown the the top. Like you know, let let, let it dry because it's meant to be crumbled like that. But let's see what happens with the stove top baking. <laughs> All right, so while that is, um, oops, okay. That is already, I'm gonna reduce the heat to low. So the technique is always medium click low, medium click low, okay? Another thing that um, I would like you to do is understand also when you're using your salad master when you start on a medium high sometimes the valve will not you won't hear the gentle tapping you won't hear it at all because then there's too much heat so this is really designed for just a medium start okay medium start okay all right so can we just have a look at our so this is done let me just clear this up So that is our um, lamb shanks. 41 minutes to go. So we're going to turn that on the other side in short work. So just 
Okay. potatoes like this stock okay just seafood wise is already done okay and to do that you can either use your um, um, a handheld blender or your uh, what's the paper with juicer thing um, nutri bullet but I still go for the normal way I just put some in a bowl and then <laughs> you don't need a lot anyway you don't need to, to mash a lot okay so okay. So what I'll do is I'll transfer some of the stock. This is what I do at home. So very very traditional i just grab some of the stock okay and literally just mash some of my vegetables <laughs> without the seafoods of course because i want the potato to be really that pretty and then we're gonna add some um, flour more to make it slurry like a slurry pipe And most of the time, whenever I make this, you know, it's so different when you have when you have lots of kids because they go, oh, we want it more um, slurry. Oh, it's too slurry. Like, what? <laughs> just eat it. The food is really great. Okay, so I just remove this seafood here. Okay, then I'll grab my. Okay. And then just grab your mash and then just mash it. Otherwise, um, we're gonna put some cream, you know, like a little bit of milk, make it more interesting. And the one, the thing is, how does it taste? Do we need to add salt? Fine. G, I'm not sure. Thank you very much. I just do this. Okay. But if you have a blender, well, wow, use a use a blender too. Okay. Okay. Very good. Then, if you want it more creamy, then that's when you add. A more um, uh, um, flour, okay. So let's put a bit of um, let's put some flour, a little bit more flour in this. So how I do it? Just add flour and then a bit of water and then just mix, mix it all together. Okay, so. And you can get stock from here or just use normal cold water. Okay. That's it. Okay, lunch is gonna be ready because we are almost done. So to make this slurry a bit more creamy, just add more of this. Flour. Okay. That's good. 
So we'll give it um, just one click and then we can turn off, we can turn this off. Let's check our lab chat lab chat. <laughs> All right, so lab chats, let's check. Can you see from there? Or do you want me to move this piece? Oh, it's frozen. Okay. All right, well guys, maybe you can come forward and check this out. So this is now our, then this is just half, you know, this is just half of the time, you know. Okay, so this is only half of the cooking time, right? So then all we need to do is just let it uh, cook more further. Okay. Yeah, this is the right. Yeah, this is the right level of the stock. Because yeah. the stock is um, only for you if you want more gravy. You know, what most people do is they they would um, uh, seed, uh, strain. They will strain the stock and then just come up with the actual uh, gravy, and then they would you put some um, uh, corn flour. To make it thick, but that's the the reason why you want to put more veg. But for me, I like to also have the veggies, so I add the vegetables in my. You know, I don't make the gravy anymore, but it's it's up to you. You can make gravy as um, what's this? Just get a, a strainer, strain the stock, have your gravy, and then cook that with some um, flour or cornmeal. All right, so. I'll leave that again. Okay. Let's check this one because I believe it's 10 minutes done. No one can... yeah. Okay, that's okay. You know what? <laughs> Let's check our pear. Ah. So the pear is caramelized. So the sugar has caramelized already. Okay. Let's just check if it's too soft or it's just right, okay? So the consistency should be... Some people like it like you just cut it as if it's like, it's too soft. Some people like it too soft. And some want it still, yeah, like crunchy, you still get to bite. I don't know, what do you feel? Have you tried? Uh, well, personally, uh, not pear apple. I like it, not crunchy, but with a purpose. Yeah. Yeah, you for what about you what's your personal preference when 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 um, you have like apple crumble and all that? Do you want the apples to be too soft or not huh? Not too soft. I don't like it also. So for me the consistency consistency is just like like this. I like it like this. Okay. You get to enjoy the, the bite. <laughs> okay. So now that this is already uh, we're happy with this. We can then put that here, isn't it? That's, uh, that's what it says in our recipe. Okay, so we're just gonna, I'll just put this in the middle. Okay, so can you see it? That's better. Now all we have to do is put the rest of our ingredients in. So this has butter, so this will form, um, because it has butter, then it will form that, that crumble, okay? And the heat, remember the heat cannot be high, or cannot be on even on medium. So my heat setting at the moment is low, but you have to be careful because you could burn the sugar if the heat is quite high. So always remember to keep it at the minimum low. Okay. So 
So that is your. Okay. So how long are we gonna do it like this? What does it say in the recipe? Bake and cover for 20 minutes. Bake and for 20 minutes. I'm just gonna let it cook on the low. Because we are baking now, that will be on low heat. Okay. And I'll put the lid on, covered. Where's the lid? Okay. So when you're baking, let's turn this off. When you're baking just like the pizza on the stove top, use low heat so that you don't burn your pizza. Okay, so this is gonna be on low. Okay, and I'll let this, we need another timer. If it says 20 minutes, I'll do 10 minutes. Okay, 10 minutes. Okay. So Peterson is doing. <laughs> Peter, okay. All right. Well, before we conclude, I actually forgot to mention that we have um, broccolinis that we need to steam because that will be served with our mash uh, with our um, uh, oh, okay, lamb shanks. Okay. So we're just gonna quickly steam some uh, broccolini. You know how to do it? I think an expert now in broccoli. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, okay, so we're going to be using this, we'll just use this one. Now, whatever size of, of uh, this is a small wok, it's a three-quart wok, so this is smaller than what you have. And you know the rules, you know, to steam, you don't really need a lot of water, you just put it there. Okay. So steaming means just a small amount of water, medium click low, and then after low, that would be five minutes or three minutes, depending on the quantity of your whatever you're steaming. So I'll put a bit of water, okay? So the amount of water is just, can you, can you, see, can you see that? The amount of water is, is like, um, I don't know, uh, like two, ta two, three tablespoons. Yeah, and then I'll just leave it there. Put the lid on. Okay, and we'll cook uh, that. Book says, uh, what would be the time needed if you hope to use fresh seafood or powder? Would it be the same? Oh, fresh seafood. Yeah, it will be the same. It will be the same because then you're going to put the the seafood with the with the stock and the vegetables. So the purpose of the, the seafood is to get your stock to taste like, the, to have the flavor. So not just the fish, but also your, your veggies. So yeah, it will be the same. Okay, so this is gonna be medium quick low. My medium will be on five. That's a, an induction. When it clicks, we reduce the heat to low and we'll time it for 10 minutes, okay? All right, so that's it. Let's check the chowder. <laughs> it's so nice. There's so many beautiful smell here. Looks like my gas is running out. We still have extra gas. Yeah, it's gone. So that's our recipe. So I'm gonna show you now how the lamb shanks actually looks like when it's fully cooked. <laughs> when it's yummy cooked. I'll put this on the side. That will be on low. Okay. No, no, no. Okay, so that's about it. So now we're gonna have our lunch, and the, the mashed potato looks amazing. I actually like the mashed potato looks really nice. <laughs> and uh, by that look, you don't even need to add milk, okay? So one third cup of water, that's pretty nice, okay? So let me grab the lunch, which I have pre cooked earlier. Oh, 
Okay. Oh, this is clicking. Okay. So let's reduce the heat. I'll just set it down to two. Okay. That's my. That's the low. Any questions? If I'm, question is when are we gonna eat now? <laughs> We're gonna eat now. So the lamb chunks which I pre-cooked uh, okay. <laughs> now the seal is still there Whoa. let's check guys so come and have a look so the juice has already, I mean the stock has already, um, it's already reduced, you know. That's, this is about a liter of water of stock, but I did half half. First half of cooking is 500, um, yeah, two cups. So let's have a look at this one. See? It's really nice and, it's nice and um, soft. That's how it is. And because you have the, all the flavor is in your lamb. Okay. So this can be beef. It doesn't have to be shanks. It can be the lamb, just the lamb meat. Mm -hmm. But of course, the, the, um, the bones, the, the shank gives yeah. that extra flavor. <laughs> see how, so that's how, see, see, it's coming off the bone. You know, I think Louise, our, our guys from, um, from the, from Zoom, are you hungry? Because we are. <laughs> so how will we, how are we going to serve that? It's actually, I like plating. So let's plate one, okay? So, based on the drawing that you have there, <laughs> you will need <laughs> some mash. Okay. okay. And then you will need lamb. So, for the purpose of um, presentation, <laughs> so we basically, it would, that's a big lamb, but you need the photo, right? Okay. Then you will be adding some of the gravy. If you want to make your own gravy, then of course. We're gonna, this is good. We're gonna scoop out the, the the gravy, but we did not make gravy because it is all not when you go. Whoops, something's going to burn me. I think this I'm gonna turn this off. Well, I'm not the best in presentation, but it looks amazing. And I think I can eat this. <laughs> so that's how it would be with our steamed veggies. I think it would look so much better. Let's check our steamed veggies. For the steamed veggies? Yeah. One more minute. Let's see. I think we should be okay. Turn this off. Oh my gosh. This is how you want your broccoli. Okay, medium, quick, no, the green is just real green. <laughs> That's so nice. So, we're going to just put some of the broccoli in there. Okay, so that is the presentation for the lamb shanks. Picture, please. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so, okay, guys, so it's about time to let's have a look now. Everything, I think. So we'll need some, uh, some okay. 
ready we can grab your grab your plates I think I put too much uh, water as top of this but guys you can make your own and make it bit not as soupy as this okay but well there's no harm in adding more <laughs> so that's our that's the one and this is together do we need I think we'll just, is it okay to just use this? Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Um, okay. The tone is here for the, for the, okay. So that should, be, yes, please. Thank you. All right. I'll take this out. Let's have a look. Got the soup bowls there, the plates there. Okay, let's check this out. Any questions for the zoo people? First one for the zoo. Ah, yeah. yeah. So this one, you can. Any questions from the people in the zoo? So we just. So that's the crumble, of course. Well, it didn't have the much liquid, so. That's the sugar and the butter at the bottom. So see that? Don't worry, cleaning is easy. Just put warm water and it should be fine. <laughs> okay, well, let's check this out. But now let's begin with all of this. So to get the, was it just a little bit of the heat? To get the, the, the yeah. bottom there, do you think? Yes, yes. So the heat, um, okay. you might just get that anyway. Um, because we have the butter and sugar, I think the water that we put is a little, but then again, the heat might be the one. Maybe reduce the heat a bit more. Because this is the time for oven bake, for oven cooking, right? Yeah. So, I think it looks beautiful. It looks like nice and smells, yeah, it smells very nice and smells good too. <laughs> yeah, so okay, so why don't we come forward and uh, we'll do this and then let's eat. We'll put the dessert at the end. 